Hello, my name is Jan O'Neill and I'm a community coach with the County Health Rankings and Roadmaps. I'm joined by my colleague and fellow coach, Karen Odegaard. Hello, we are excited to bring you the Using the Rankings data on Beyond Your County Rankings snapshot. Um, during today's short webinar, we're going to be introducing you to a tool that you can use to get the most out of the data on our site. Great, so, and before we get started here, we would just like to uh, acknowledge that the County Health Rankings and Roadmaps Program is based at the University of Wisconsin Population Health Institute, and we are a collaboration with the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. We'd also like to acknowledge that this program is the result of the contributions of many colleagues and partners here in Wisconsin and all across the nation. So thanks to their support, we're able to bring you this webinar today. Before we dive into the tool for today, let's just provide a little bit of context. Ranking snapshots are a great starting point for community conversations about ways to improve health, but our site also has a wealth of data that can help you focus more specifically on the needs in your community and go beyond the rankings measures. And we also have some great examples of other communities that are using the data in creative ways to mobilize local action to improve health. Now, there's a number of reasons you might need more data. So looking at the take action cycle, you might need data to, as you're gathering information to assess needs in your community. Uh, you might be digging deeper into root causes so you can prioritize and focus on what's important. Maybe you're building public and political will for taking action. Um, or you're evaluating to improve your, your strategies and to ensure that what you're doing is effective. And you probably also need data when, you're trying, when you are communicating with partners and policymakers and your community. There's a, a whole host of reasons for why you might need more data. So today's guiding question is, how can we make the best use of the data available on the County Health Ranking site? The Using the Rankings Data Guide can help us answer that question. So let's dive right in. And we're, Karen's going to take us right over to the website, uh, countyhealthrankings.org. So we're going to start with the home page here. And I'll, we'll show you where to find the Using the Rankings Data Guide. So it's in the orange navigation bar at the top under Health Rankings. And Karen's going to click on Using the Rankings Data. And we will see when that opens up seven sections. And we'll be exploring each of those sections one at a time. So let's stop, let's have our first stop with the uh, communities that are using the rankings data. Here you'll find inspiring and even out of the box uh, thinking from communities that are. Um, using rankings data to do everything from using rankings as a wake-up call to part of their needs assessments to dig into root causes of health issues to tracking progress and even to building public and political will for policy change. There are over a dozen rural, urban, and suburban community examples from all over the country to draw tips and ideas from. Yeah, Jan, I really like to share this section with communities that are thinking about how to make the most out of their rankings data. And one of my favorite examples, just to give you a sense of what you'll find here, one of my favorite examples is how United Way of Greater Toledo used the rankings report to create a sense of urgency. Um, and then it's right up here, and you can go ahead and click on this sense of urgency or in all these hyperlinks here um, to learn more about in each of these stories. In this story, you can learn more about how they mobilize community members and leaders to work together to improve health. So I'm going to turn it back to Jan. I think we're going to keep moving through. Great. So next up is the Exploring the Data section, where you'll see all the ways to explore, compare, and visualize the rankings and all the underlying data. You might think of this page as cliff notes to help remind you of what's available. So if you are one that looks at your county snapshot and you get a little bit overwhelmed by the number of columns um, of data and measures that you see there, or maybe you're walking someone else through the data, this is a really great page to get oriented to what you're seeing on your snapshot. And you can see it gives um, some detailed descriptions about each of the, the types of data that are included in your snapshot. Really great page to get oriented. Right, and speaking of snapshots, let's take a look next at making use of your snapshot. 
Now this section has questions you can use to identify where your strengths and challenges are as a, as a county. And using your county snapshot as the basis, you can start to look at which measures are strongest and which may need improvement and how you compare to state and to national averages. I, I think of this page as um giving you some guidance on how to interpret your snapshot. So if the, the last page that we looked at tells you what's on it, then this page can help you start to understand and uh, make some decisions based on what's included there. So some of the questions that you might find, which of your county's health outcomes and factors have the best ranks? Which of the measures in your county's snapshot are better than the state average? Which are worse? And it also includes some interpretation tips like, what the interaction between your health outcomes and your health factors rank might suggest. Great, and now let's take a look at the Digging Deeper section, which helps you go beyond your county level data to let you know whether there are more detailed data for subgroups by age, gender, race, ethnicity, ability, and sexual orientation, and whether other measures of health exist at the state, county, and even city level. Knowing whether these data sources exist can help you better focus your resources as a community on where they're most needed. I think this is often one of the big ahas for people when they when they discover that our site not only includes the great data on the county health rankings, um, but it also includes link to some links to additional data that can be more specific beyond the county level. Absolutely, I hear that all the time from um, from teams and individuals. They can't believe how much richness there is linked on this site. So let's go in to broaden your view. And the Broaden Your View section provides another level of questions that can help you think about additional data you might want to look for in your community, data that can help prioritize your efforts. And these questions can help you go beyond the rankings measures. So, for example, what are the leading causes of death? Which diseases are most common? Which diseases are people being hospitalized for? Or, let's say you're addressing the health factors, what second-hand smoke policies are in place? Or, how healthy are school lunches? We encourage you to work with others in your community to identify the questions that are most important and potential data sources that can help you find answers. Because there's no need to reinvent the wheel. Some questions can be answered by searching for data that's already been collected in your community by other stakeholders. So if we think of the rankings as a starting point, then uh, I think this section of using the rankings data helps direct you to some of the next questions you might want to ask about what's happening in your community. Now let's take a look at visualize the data uh, in this section. You'll see links to other websites with visual mapping of data that's similar to the county health rankings. And we'd like to take a look at a couple of these links so that you can see the, the richness here. So Karen's going to open up the Map the Meal Gap. And in this link, what we'll see is um, data about food insecurity, SNAP, poverty, and food cost data for each state by county and congressional district. So if you scroll down a little bit, Karen, um, we can see that there's going to be a, a, a whole map there. And so one can put in what, what you're looking for in the search bars there. Uh, the other uh, map that we wanted to show you is the walk score. Um, this is very cool. It, it shows you for any address in, uh, in the country. Um, it provides city and neighborhood data about the uh, residents' ability to, to walk or bike. So you can put in your address and uh, get a, a great uh, assessment score for walkability and bikeability. We know that maps are a powerful way to engage people in the conversation about health and communities, and these are some really helpful resources to dig into to help you both understand what's happening in your community, but also to communicate it to some of your key stakeholders. So finally, the Finding More Data section links you to national and state data sources that may be helpful. You can click on your state to see what data may be available at the sub-county and or demographic level. So Karen's going to show us what it looks like on the Wisconsin data page. It's a pretty robust uh, page of data sources, and you can do this for your state. 
And if you click on any of those links, it'll take you directly into the data source. Now, going back to the Finding More Data page, uh, we'll also see that there are national data sources. And one that we wanted to show you is this uh, Community Health Status Indicators 2015, CHSI. And we wanted to take you into that site um, because uh, it shows the health profiles for all 3,143 counties and county equivalents. So when we go in to Wisconsin and into Dane County, which is where we are at the university here, um, what you get is a, a visual um, of a number of different indicators and they color code these. So you get a really quick sort of snapshot of how are you doing compared to peer counties. And they give you an explanation of how they um, find those peer counties and that's that's on the site as well. It's a, a long list of criteria that they use for peer counties. Now, um, we talked about under broaden your view. We talked about a number of questions that you might um, you might start to generate and some of those questions you can look to existing data and others you may find that you need to collect some of your own data. Um, I want to just take a moment to make a plug for one of the guides um, included in the Roadmaps to Health Action Center, which you'll find under Roadmaps to Health and under Action Center. Uh, you can find in the Assess Needs and Resources guide that there are some specific tools and guidance for collecting primary data. Great. Thank you so much, Karen, for taking us through the website. And uh, we hope that you got a lot out of this very short webinar. Um, seeing all seven sections of using uh, the data uh, beyond the county snapshot. And uh, we look forward to seeing you on future webinars. So feel please uh, sign up and register for those. And you'll also find recordings of all the webinars we've done. And um, we'd like to leave you with a couple of reflection questions. Who else do you need to share this information with? And what's one idea for action that you're taking from this uh, short webinar? Thank you so very much for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you on future webinars. Thanks again.